Are you good? I'm good. I flew in yesterday, oh. so I'm a little jet lagged. Oh man, I you know what? And the older I get, because I flew some, I flew my with my kids to Montana this weekend, and I can't get get it back. I'm like, oh my god, it's not that far away, but it feels like I was in Germany. Drinking water. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm so tired. But it's nice to meet you. I've been a fan for so long, and I hear that you're also a lover of music. Oh, all lover. my life. Yeah. yeah. Like almost, you were like could have been in bands, kind of love of music. I should have been in bands, but yeah. it, all my friends were. Yeah. But I'm from Youngstown, Ohio, and uh, it was like I mean I remember, like, we were singing a cappella when we were ten. Yeah. You know, playing baseball in the field and singing yeah. like "Stranded in the Jungle" by the Cadets. Yeah. You all know that tune, don't you? Totally. Stranded it's in the Jungle. It's on my playlist. Yes. Uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, that's so yeah, cool, it. especially singing that young. Yeah. Um, I, I hear you went to Catholic school, right? Yeah. Yeah, and the, the nuns really helped you kind of figure out who you were, like at a young age. They well, saw it almost before you, right? Well, I was beaten by nuns, and oh. then I was. Oh. <laughs> And then I was then I was educated by that. Her. was a different story than I was fed. <laughs> I was like, no, I had a nun. They, uh, her name was Mother Rosemary. I don't know how the nuns. Some of them got that tag, Mother. I don't know why, but yeah, it was, I did a play, you know, in my junior year, senior yeah. year, and then she recruited me to do this oratorical competition stuff. What is that? I mean, I get what oratorical means. You memorize is... like a monologue, a story. Yeah. And then on, on Saturdays, which was no fun, you go to different high schools and you compete against other students. But did you like say you were interested in it? It's just interesting no, that they no, just I picked you to do it. Yeah. That's so, I, that would have terrified me. Well, you don't say no to Mother Rosemary. Okay, well, <laughs> it turns out from your initial answer, you don't. No, no. <laughs> um, so wait, what kind of student were you? Were you were you pretty good or were you no, like... Not good. You were mischievous? Not good. Yeah, yeah. you mean, were I just was... prepping for Al Bundy. That's what you were doing. I it was all that so. prep. <laughs> I just wanted to go outside and play. You yeah. Know? I don't think there's anything wrong with that, by the way. Like, my kids are the same, but they're just... The, I don't want to strip them of that. I think no. that's part of who they are and like why they're going to be who they are, you know? Yeah, yeah. You got to be yeah, you got to be careful with that. Yeah. Know, yeah, agreed. Agreed. So wait, so Rosemary put you in your first play though, right? She did, and then it was kind of a strange thing because it was filmed in a in a, a television studio afterwards. It got like a lot of attention. Yeah. And it was me and it was a lot of my school Well, here's plays the other funny that. thing. The coincidences in your life there was a, a little boy in the play. Yeah. So, and, he, and I was a priest in the play. And the little boy's name is Jim Cummings. Now, he must have been like 10. And now he's a big voiceover actor for Disney for years. He's done all the Disney voices. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, he's quite famous in that, in that world of voiceover. How know. random. Yeah. You also, you taught, you were a teacher. Well, I was a, a inner city uh, substitute teacher. You know, I got That's cut. That's harder. Well, I was with the Steelers. I was cut by the Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, yeah. in 69, Chuck Knoll's first year. Wait, what? Oh, you didn't know that, did you? No. Yeah, what? I was a rookie with Pittsburgh in 69. That's incredible. Kind of. Well, not that you were cut. <laughs> well, that I got cut. This, right? this, <laughs> that was, this interview's going well, Ed. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, it's my fine. best interview yet. No, I, but I came home with nothing to do. So I got this job as substitute teacher, basically yeah. babysitter. Yeah. And so I, I did that. That's for a hard. While. Kids can be me. Like, what age? Was it like eighth, junior high? Seventh, eighth grade. Oh, that's a junior high. That's yeah. puberty. That's hard. Yeah. yeah. Well, I replaced a woman that had a nervous breakdown. They literally <laughs> they, they carried her out. <laughs> they tell you that as you're walking in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my god. And I had a beard. I, I grew a beard, and the kids called me Wolfman. Okay. Well, hey, that could be kind of intimidating. So that well, you use yeah, that. Well, they, yeah, they, they, you know, they knew I had been with the Steelers, so the boys yeah. were okay. You know, they yeah. were like, oh no, this guy, you know. Don't mess around. Don't mess around with this Yeah, guy. he went to Catholic school. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> I have to ask you, like, what are you recognized more for? Because no, not many people have two incredibly huge pop culture shows like you've had, like with Married Children, Modern Family. Like, what do you get recognized more? Depends for? on where I am. <laughs> That's a good answer. If I, if I'm in Vegas, it's Married with Children. Yeah. <laughs> If I'm in Beverly Hills, it's Modern Family. Okay, I was, I was like, that's a great answer, yeah. actually. Yeah. It's such a, that's such a, a blessing, though. Like, not many people can say they've been a part of two enormous shows. And, uh, married, I thought it would be canceled every year. You I, did? Yeah, you didn't... every year. Oh, my God, it's literally, like, that and Roseanne and, like, the Cosby show is all I watched. That's, like, my childhood. Yeah, well, yeah. when we got, when I got the show, I thought, well, will be canceled after three or four shows because we're making fun of 
all sorts of people. Which is hilarious. Yeah. I loved every episode, though. I actually loved that y'all talked about subjects that people didn't, but we all kind of did, but no one did. I don't know if your show, if Married with Children, would be able to, you'd be able to have that well, show Well, there's now. no way they could handle, you know, we, we, I think we were the only show before or after that, that dealt with the marriage, the sex, the sex not being great in the marriage. Yeah. They never, even in Roseanne, they would make up and go flying up the stairs. Yeah, you know? yeah. And they're, they're running up the stairs, and I'm watching, going, yeah, right, you know. Yeah. <laughs> they, went, so, they went to take yeah, a know. nap. No, no, <laughs> no. And I had one show with, with Katie Seagal when we were arguing, and then it was the only show we did in 265 shows where she was wrong. I was always wrong. So in this episode, she said, you know, I, I know I was wrong. And I said, yeah. And she said, I apologize. And I said, Great. She said, can we go upstairs? I said, no, because after all, I wasn't wrong here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So, I, you know. I love that show, though. Yeah. It's, yeah, I, I, it's, it was such a great show for, for me. So do you remember, do you remember the audition for that? What, like, what was that like? I Since do. you didn't think it was going to... I do. I, I was playing handball. So I got this call from my agent, and they said, uh, we got this pilot. It's called Married with Children. And I said, terrible title. <laughs> I'm on the phone, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's not good. The show's not good. I said, why are you calling me? <laughs> it's amazing. Because I was in New York, but yeah. I'd come out there for a failed pilot. Yeah. This business. So uh, they said, well, do you want to go over? It's at Sunset Gower, and you're at the Hollywood Y. I said, I'm, I'm playing handball. They said, well, can we send it over to the locker room? You can read it in the locker room, which is kind of ironic, you know, Married with Children. Yeah. Read it in the locker room. And I thought, this is kind of funny. So I went over and I met Ron Levitt and, and Michael Moya, who were the creators and producers, yeah. and they looked like gas station attendants. <laughs> they really did. Everything you know, when is your car breaks down. Well. Yeah, I mean, you know, they look they look that way. So when I read it, I thought of the character as one of my uncles, who was actually a judge. Yeah. But he was self-deprecating. You know, in other words, he expected things to go wrong, and he always was right. And I, that's how Bundy yeah. struck me. And I guess the other actors that auditioned for it, you know, rightfully so, thought of Jackie Gleason, like the Honeymooners. You know, they yeah. were yelling and to the moon, Alice, yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. But I did it like, and I remembered this happened to my uncle. He came home from work one day, and uh, he went in, and his wife, my aunt, uh, was there. And he said, what's for dinner, honey? And she said, I, I ran over the dog in the driveway, Joe. It's dead. He said, but what's for dinner? <laughs> so that's how I read it. <laughs> and, and they hadn't heard that. Yeah. So that, and that's how I got it. But even oh then, God. even then when they, they wanted to hire me, there was a guy named Barry Diller who was Murdoch's right-hand guy. I probably shouldn't tell this story, but I will. Uh -huh. He said to them, I wasn't around then, well, you got the gal, meaning Katie, yeah. But you can do a hell of a lot better for the guy. And they said, well, we, we got to shoot it in a week. Yeah. And we've seen a lot of guys. And he said, your funeral. And he left. So then they went, they started to make arrangements to hire me. And then yeah. he called from his office and said, what are you doing with the O'Neill guy? You get rid of him? And they said, no, you said, you know, we could do it. And he said, I wasn't telling the truth. <laughs> Well, be clear with your words, So sir. what happened, a long story short, is it was originally for 12 episodes. Yeah. It was sold for 12. And he said, now it's one. It's the pilot. And if it doesn't do great, it'll never see the light of day if you hire this guy. Oh, my God. Now, they didn't tell me. I didn't know about it. I would not have told you either. It might, it might crush your confidence a tiny bit, you know? I, you know, yeah. I probably would have. No, yeah. But then we did the pilot, and then he said, basically, uh, all right. And that's how we got started. It was the and, one episode, like, Peggy saying yeah, she was wrong. And years later, I ran into him at, a, at an awards thing. I think I was doing Modern Family. And he came up and he said, I made a mistake about you. And I said, well, we all make them, you know. Yeah, you just made a big one, man. Yeah. <laughs> but that happens That's, all the time. It, it, you know what? It's so funny. Even in, like, music, like, songs land where they're supposed to land, roles land where they're yeah. supposed to land. I, I, I believe in that as well. But it is nice to hear someone actually own it. Okay, well, wait. Let's talk about your new series. It's called Clipped. Oh, yeah. And this is about a scandal. Yeah. So did you, do you like 
Did you like, did you jump right onto this opportunity? Were you no, a little no, like, no. cause when it's real it's, life stuff, I would get nervous. It's the way I get everything, you know? Yeah. It was, it was, I read it and I liked the writing a lot. Yeah. It was written by a woman named Gina Welsh who had worked with a dear friend of mine, David Milch, NYPD Blue, Deadwood, uh, all those shows. So I thought, oh God, I like the writing, but I don't know if I can do this part. Yeah. And so I told them I was gonna pass. I told my agent to tell them, and then they called yeah. me and said, would you have lunch with Gina? Now, whenever they do this- They're trying to rope you in. You don't yeah. wanna, you know, you yeah. don't wanna go down that road. Yeah. And I thought, well, because of her connection to David Milch, who I owe a lot to, yeah. I said, okay. So on the way over to the restaurant, I'm driving my car thinking, I'm writing my exit speech, you know. Yeah. Can't do it. Politely no. letting yeah. her down. Yes, the yeah. Most polite way. Yeah. And so then halfway through the lunch, I, I, for, I, we didn't talk about the show. We are talking about other things. And then she said, well, I hope you consider. I said, oh, I'll do it. <laughs> Just a 180. That is a powerful yeah. woman. Yeah. Okay, yeah.